it is. I'm glad that you're here. Uh, appreciate you joining us tonight for our Bible study. And uh, I, I just don't, I'm ready for the weather to make up its mind if it's spring, winter, or summer. Amen. That wind was about blew us away today. And uh, at least it was good and pretty and sunny. But um, it's good to have you in the Lord's house tonight. Thank you for coming being a part of this. Uh, I know you're probably all, like me, kind of kind of wore out a little bit, ready to, to sit back and take it easy, but your faith to come and your dedication and obedience to the Lord's house will be blessed by Him tremendously, and I appreciate you being here. We're going to be back in our study. We began last week talking about the um, millennial reign of Christ and what it was and what it all meant, and uh, we're going to go back there tonight and talk about it some more. I would like to finish that up tonight. I'm not sure that'll happen, so I'm not making any promises there, but we'll be back in Revelation chapter number 20, first six verses, look at there, and then we've got some other places in Scripture we'll look at tonight as well, but before we do that, uh, any special prayer requests we need to remember tonight? David Pace. Just remember, remember that one. I have a praise report. Um, yes. JD that I mentioned. Um, uh, thank you, William. Uh, that I mentioned uh, last Wednesday that they didn't have any teachers. He um, has not had any children <coughs> and they got to go home. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord for that. Yeah. Well, I love to hear them praise reports. That's good. That's good. Oh, remember? Our care day is Dr. Day. We're going to go to the Bible. Okay. Remember, remember Brother Emma. Pray for that box. She'll come back with well. She'll probably get mad at me for doing this. But y'all pray for Miss Nicole. She's had a spot on her ear for quite some time, a skin spot. She went and had it checked out, and it did come back skin cancer. So there's a, a few things that they're going, a few options that they can do, but uh, not serious, but just pray for her. Pray for her. Also pray for the Jack Joyner family. Jack Joyner passed away this week. He was a, in our community at Tice. He was a very, very influential and a very well thought of fellow. So pray for his family. Any other Unspoken. Unspoken. Any other unspoken. Remember our Lord, uh, pray that for their sake, for their guides, and for their leaders, and uh, all those that are in leadership positions in our government, in our state, in our county, uh, all those in their prayers at this time. You remember the leaders, too, of a lot of the church associations and stuff. Yeah. Thank you, stuff. Yeah, they've, they've had a little bit of some issues with some of their things they just said. Pray for Sam, he's pray for the leaders of those churches, yeah. Pray for those churches, too. I think I, I saw one church that actually sent a letter to them. Somebody that actually returned and they asked her to leave the church. I mean, it's about, I'm not good for that church, too. So right. churches have to take a stance now for some of the things that people are trying to bring into them. And I don't think it's a good thing they're trying to bring in, but, you know, they're just trying to get attention, I think. So. Right. Remember those. Anybody else tonight? Uh, Mr. Robert that used to come, let me mention him. He uh, he used to be, he's been coming pretty regular. <coughs> Knew he wasn't here last week before last. And last week. He had an accident. Uh, Rick is vehicle and uh, made him up a little bit. We have y'all probably it's not real, real serious. Sapp, Robert Sapp, okay. Yeah, he, well, he, he, uh, <laughs> he actually, he got that ticket, he had somebody pick him up a ticket and bring him to 
good in, uh, in rehab. So <laughs> that's how I knew. Uh, I found out that he had, that he was. But uh, I think Brother Daniel was telling me about one of them. He, he, yes. got, he, he got one anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Pray for him. His his wife uh, tragically died in a house fire not too long ago, and that's uh, been really really hard for him. And so pray for him there. That's that's where he he's really lonely, and uh, just really really alone, and just kind of lost without her. So pray pray for him in that area as well. I don't know about children or anything. I'm not sure if he's got any of that. But I know he lost his wife. So all right, anybody else tonight? I haven't talked to Miss Nancy very, very much lately. I usually talk to her pretty regular. I haven't talked to her in the last few weeks. Uh, do you, have you heard? Okay, okay. Well, I'll, I'll make note that her. But pray for Mr. Johnny and Miss Nancy. Dean, I know probably nobody in here knows who they are, but they are a couple that is members of our church. They've been shut in for quite so many years. Probably over 10 years right now. Uh, he's had a lot of health issues and a lot of things. He has cancers and things, so pray for me. I, I do talk to her regularly, and uh, you'll see them quite often. I think it's their daughter, but it's Mary, so the Randy Bride, I think, was it? I'm not sure. Yeah. 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 Randy Bride's sure. wife. Their daughter. Brother Bill, I, last I heard from Miss Bernice that he was doing much better enjoying it a lot more where he was at there. I hadn't talked to her this, this week, but uh, she told me that he, he was, of course, he'll be in quarantine for 14 days. I think that's probably up next week. Uh, so uh, pray, for, pray for him. They, they, he's much better. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and then we'll get right into our study tonight. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you tonight as humble as we know how. Father, we thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for allowing enter into your house again. Lord, we're thankful we can come to a place and, Lord, bring our petitions and our prayer requests before you. Lord, just ask you, Lord, to hear the, each and every one. We know that you already know the situations. Lord, we know that you already have uh, a plan worked out for it, Lord. We just pray that we would, uh, you would work according to your will. Lord, that it would bring you glory and honor. God, we just pray that you would touch each and every one that's sick, those that's lost loved ones. God, give them the comfort they need, those that are that are needing a, a healing touch. God, we just pray that you touch them, those that, Lord, just are sin sick, and Lord, need help spiritually. God, pray that you speak to their heart. Lord, you know every request that was made. You know it specifically, and, and Lord, we just pray that it would be, uh, that you would hear it, Lord. God, I just thank you for all that you've done for our church. Lord, what you're doing and how you're moving. We just pray that you continue to put your blessings upon it. Lord, I pray that you bless these people that's come out, out here tonight. Lord, they've stopped their day, Lord. Uh, and this beautiful weather that we've had, they've stopped. They've come to the house of the Lord to, to worship, to learn, to draw closer to you. God, we just pray that you do that. Holy Spirit, we need you to guide us. We need you to help us tonight. Lord, guide us into all truth. God, just give us what we say. We'll give you the honor and the glory for it. We thank you, Jesus. Lord, I also thank you that he arose out of the grave. Session for us, giving us power to live, and we'll give you the glory for it. Thank you for it, Lord Jesus. And we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. <laughs> Revelation chapter number 20. We're talking about a very, uh, we're very, It's, it's a subject tonight, and we talked about last week through the millennial reign of Christ that you don't hear a whole lot about. You probably have not ever been to a, a church service on a Sunday morning and heard a preacher preach about the millennial reign of Christ. How many of y'all ever heard a sermon about that? One, none. Yes, it's always one. So it's not very many. It's just something that's, that's not uh, preached a lot. It's easier to talk. Let me say this. It's easier to talk than preach. That's why we're entering into it. But we were doing that because of our, um, we talked about those resurrected bodies.
that we receive and what they do. And we're going to look at tonight how we'll put those bodies to use in this slain reign of Christ. One reason you don't hear a whole lot about it because in this, it's a thousand reign, a millennial reign. For any of y'all, I'll give you a recap of what we talked about last week. The millennial reign of Christ is a literal thousand year reign of Christ where Christ is going to come and reign on this earth as king. Uh, sit on his throne in Jerusalem and rule over this earth for a thousand years. We talked about who's going to be there. Well, the who's going to be there are the saved people, the the church that's raptured out uh, at the beginning of the tribulation. They're going to take all those things, the marriage supper of the Lamb, judgment seat of Christ, will take place in heaven. Then they're coming back with Christ at his second coming. Then they will enter into the millennial reign of Christ in their new glorified bodies. Also, the Old Testament saints, they will not be raised at the rapture. Only, the only people going to heaven at that time are New Testament church believers, church age believers. They'll be raised. Old Testament saints stay in the grave until that time where they enter in after the great tribulation is over and they enter into the millennial reign of Christ. Then they will be raised from, uh, from death, receive their new body, and then they'll enter in. The old, t or excuse me, the uh, tribulation saints, those saints that are killed in the tribulation because of their stance for Christ, those that God has sent out and minister, they will, they will <coughs> also be raised, enter in with a new body. There will be people that endure the tribulation period. There will be people that make it through, they endure uh, through the end. They will not accept the mark of the beast. They will not do those things. They'll endure the end, they will enter in unto the uh, millennial reign of Christ. Also, those that were that were dead or that were killed during that time, those are saved during the time. And let me say this: there will be people saved during the tribulation, Gentile and Jewish, mostly Jewish, but some Gentile. They will enter into the millennial reign of Christ. So, there's actually going to be three different groups with two different bodies. They're going to be those that have glorified bodies entering, raised, new, given that perfect body that we talked about. But there's also going to be people entering in that has a natural body, just like you and I have now. They're going to enter into that same reign with a natural body. They will not see death until that time. We're going to talk about kind of after how that will all take place. So they won't have that new body until the end of it, okay? So we'll talk about it. But one of the reasons why you don't see a whole lot about it, this thousand-year reign, do you know how much scripture that we have that's truly directed at this thousand years? Not much. It's right here in Revelation. <laughs> six, six little verses. Revelation chapter 20, verses 1 through 6. That's all the direct scripture that we have pertaining to it. So most of the stuff, so this is the question. Well, preacher, how do you know all that stuff about the millennium? I say Miss Kayla's thing. How do you know? Well, you have to go back. It was prophesied, okay? Prophecy deals a great deal in part. Those Old Testament prophets prophesied what would take place at this time, and we read into those prophecies. Look at those prophecies in the Isaiah, Jeremiah, Zechariah, Zephaniah, some of those Old Testament uh, prophets. They prophesied what would. So we're going to look at some of their prophecies tonight. See what it is. So let's read the first six verses really quick. Verse number one. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit. And he shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should, have, should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Uh, blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they need, but they shall be priests of God 
and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. You say, well, how do you know it's a thousand years? Well, it says it six times, or excuse me, uh, six times in these seven verses, it talks about a thousand year reign. Is that literal? I believe with 100% certainty, I take the scripture literally. It is a literal 1,000 years. It's a thousand year reign, that we're a literal reign. So it will be literally a thousand years. Uh, so we talked about who will be there, what it will be, and Jesus is going to come and reign. Where will it be? I want you to understand this. I hope you didn't get confused last week. This is not eternity. The millennial reign that we're talking about this thousand years, this is not eternity. For those that were raised in Christ, it will be a part of eternity. But it's not the new heaven, the new earth that, that comes down in Revelation chapter 21. That comes after. This is, this is just a, a time period. This is not eternity. After this millennial reign of Christ, we'll have a judgment, great white throne judgment where all the, the lost will be raised. That's the second resurrection. You don't want to be a part of that, uh, but they are cast into the light of fire at that time, and then we enter into the eternity, the eternal rest that we'll have with Christ in there, and those ones that go through the um, millennial reign in their natural bodies, they will receive a new body at that time, enter into eternity with Christ to live forever and ever. So this is I know this is what everybody's thinking. What's it going to be like? We kind of got, kind of got there a little bit last week, right? Well, what's it going to be like? Let me tell you, it's going to be wonderful. Let, let's go back really quick. I want to go back. Do you remember what it was like in Genesis? We don't have a whole lot of scripture on it, but when Genesis, before the fall of man, when God placed Adam in the Garden of Eden, it was a perfect creation, right? No sin, no nothing. It's going to be that way again. It is going to, the millennial reign of Christ is actually going to be uh, the same way that it would have been how God fully intended man to live. And I believe Adam had the same kind of body that we're going to have this new body. But when he fell, he was cursed. But I believe it's going to be the exact way. So it will be free of the devil. There will be no devil. There will be no devil of wickedness and evilness to tempt us and to because what happens at the very first verse that we read? He's, cast into the he's bound, he's cast up, he's thrown into prison pretty much. He's, so there won't even be temptation. There'll be no temptation for us, right? There'll be no temptation for us. There'll be no, no sin. Uh, there'll be, well, excuse me, there'll be no temptation to sin because the devil is gone. What do we, what do we blame a lot of our temptations on that? Or what do we blame a lot of our sin on that? The devil made me do it. That's exactly what everybody said. Listen, that's exactly what Adam and Eve said, right? He said, God said, what happened, Adam? He said, well, the woman did. She made me eat up. And then he looked over at Eve and said, Eve, what happened? She said, well, the devil made me do it. He came and, and threatened me. So that's what we blame everything on. We won't have that excuse at this time because that thousand-year reign was going to be an age of righteousness, Okay. There will be righteousness, and we will all fall in and be righteous. Listen, those of us that are raised to, in these new bodies, we will be perfected then, right? We won't have to worry about sin. But what about those that, that enter in with natural bodies? They're still going to have this natural flesh like we have, right? So Where's the Holy Spirit during this time? He'll be poured out everywhere, okay? He's going to be all over the place. He's gonna, I'm going to give you some scripture on that in just a moment. He's going to be everywhere. He's going to be poured out. The Holy Spirit is going to be moving. That's why we will be able to worship. That's why we'll be able to do all these great things. We'll be able to go to Jerusalem where Jesus Christ is sitting up. Reigning. We'll be able to learn from Jesus himself. Y'all know what y'all did tonight? Y'all came out to hear an old country redneck dude that, that tries to stay real hard and give you something maybe that will help you. But in that time, we'll be able to go to Jerusalem. Teleport if we want to get there fast, and we'll be able to go into the temple where Jesus is sitting and his teaching. We'll be able to just sit and listen to him. He'll be able to teach us in everything perfect, perfect time, and that is what is so amazing. So it's going to be a perfect time of peace. There, it will be peaceful. It will be peace because there will not be any devil there to bring evil, bring temptation. It will be a time of peace. Yeah. I, I, 
it's, it, I, I don't have a whole lot of what it's going I don't know if it's going to be a, an R&R &R or a Dollar General. I have no idea. Uh, I think there'll probably be a lot of things there that we don't anticipate being there. Uh, but I think, you know, we're, we're going to have an economy. There's going to be work that takes place in that time. We'll get to that and show you in just a moment. But, uh, you know, it's going to be a time of peace. I want you to understand this. It is going to be a time of peace because there will be no devil. There will be no devil to make us do it. There'll be a difference between us and them, absolutely. And there will be, during that thousand years, there's also going to be new babies born, okay? There'll be people, though, we will not recreate. We won't need to because we'll be perfected. We won't have those relations. So those those people have to come to salvation, or they're just like, they're an automatic ticket? They're, they're in, okay? They're in there because they've made it through. Okay. Now, the, the next part is where we're talking about in a minute, they will have. They'll be. They'll have to choose Christ or the devil. That's where that one Once little. Over. Yeah, that's where he says he lets the. You know, the devil's been tied up and loose. He's been put under a chain. He'll be loosed for a little while at the end. And believe it or not, there'll be people that that take sides with the devil. There will, be, there will be very little death at all during that time for animals, uh, for... Is that why, like, in the Old Testament, it talks about people in these excessive numbers a year because their age? Right, yes. That's what happened back in that time before the flood. People lived great lengths because there was no disease. There was no anything before that. And it just, you know, before the fall. But once it failed, there was a... It, it just got worse and worse and worse. That's why we only live, like... In Noah's time, Noah lived 600 and some odd years, all right? Things were bad in his day, but it still hadn't got bad. It progressively got worse. That's why we can only live to 65, 70, or excuse me, I hope it's not 65. 75, 85, 95. You see what I'm saying? We don't live in the same. I saw that. I did see, though, that the uh, oldest woman in America passed away this week. I thought that was amazing. She was 115 years old. Now, that's unreal. For us to think about, but back in the day, they will live, you know, much longer. But they will be no natural death. Listen, God, Jesus is going to remove the curse. Okay, the curse that was on the earth will be lifted. The curse that was on mankind will be lifted at that time, and there'll be no curse. So there will be no natural death at that time. Uh, the lifespan of a man will be expanded. So. We'll just live the whole thousand years. They, and those people will also live the whole thousand years. Even the, uh, those that were born, they'll live the, the whole thousand year reign at that time because there'll be no natural death. Now listen, there will be some death there. There will be those that will overtly and blatantly sin uh, just because of their flesh. They'll do something wrong. And God, Jesus is going to rule, the Bible says, with a rod of iron. He will put them away, put them to death. But it talks about in, in, in the book of Isaiah that those that die at 100 years old will be like a child dying in our day and time. Let me read that to you. Look, listen, you say, well, where do you get all this information? Isaiah chapter 65. Isaiah chapter 65 tells us many, many uh, of these things or this information that we're looking for, that we're looking at here. And it talks about their, uh, <coughs> many of those things. Look, look in verse number 20. Of 65, 20. I, Isaiah 65, 20. It says, There shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man hath not filled his days. A child shall die a hundred years old, but the sinner 
being 100 years old shall be accursed. Now, I will give you uh, a little bit of a different, I believe, in the King James Version, just, just to help you to understand this a little bit better. I'm going to read this another translation here. It may shed some more light to you here. Uh, just one second. It says this, No more shall there be in it an infant who lives but a few days. Don't y'all know that there, in our day and time, there are babies that, that live and only live for a very short few days and they pass. And we wonder why. But he said, In those times, no more shall there be in it, in it an infant who lives but a few days or an old man who does not fill out his days. He will live the whole time. For the young man shall die a hundred years old and the sinner a hundred years old shall be accursed. So what he's saying there is this. And if a man died at 100, that would be like a child dying in that time period. And the only reason they would die in that time is if they'd done something really bad against the Lord. He would rule with a rod of iron and he would put them to death. So let's read in this, not only this, but let's read some more. What, what's it going to be like? Well, Isaiah gives us some insight on this. Uh, listen, it says in verse, let me begin in verse 19. It says, and I will rejoice in Jerusalem. And joy in my people, and the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. There shall be no more thence and an infant of days, nor an old man that hath not fulfilled his days. For the child, child shall die a hundred years old, but the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed. Listen to verse 21, it's where it gets good. And they shall build Of them. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. Huh? <laughs> it's just like if you build, you'll, you'll build your own house there, I guess is what it's saying there. But you won't work for anybody else. You just work for yourself. Uh, you won't go plant for anybody else. You'll plant your own stuff. For as the days of the tree are the days of my life, and my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. Listen to that. During that thousand years, they say those that work will long. How many of y'all love getting up doing the nine to, or eight to five, eight to however, ten to ten? Y'all love that going to work? Yeah. I mean, you are in the minority. Just a few of y'all. What's wrong with y'all? You have to get. <laughs> no. Listen, that's great that you love your job. Yeah. But most of us, just like. Man, if I could go sit on the beach somewhere all day, every day, I'll take it. Because we don't really like to work. I mean, we, we work because we have to work, because it's needed. Uh, we work because it's, we have to take care of our family. And we don't really, enjoy, and sometimes we don't enjoy all the work we do. But in those times, the Bible says anything we do with the work of our hands, we will love it. It will be just exactly what you want to do. It'll be something that you love to do and you'll enjoy it. Just like when God placed Adam in the garden. What did he tell him to do? Ten. He didn't tell him to go work it, did he? He didn't tell him to go out there and work it hard and make sure that all them plants. He said go tend the garden. Ten is a little bit different word, right? Ten means he's enjoying it. He's working out there. Boy, he's enjoying every bit of tending that garden. It's going to be the same way. When we get to go do that, we'll enjoy what we do. I promise you there will not be an activity that you do during that time, that thousand years, that you will not enjoy. You will enjoy, mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. <coughs> yeah, you won't go work, build. There won't be any building firms or anything where you go out and build somebody else, you'll do your own building. You'll be able to do that and you'll do it. Like I said, and you'll live so long, you won't have to be no selling, buying, or selling. I'm not thinking that during the seven-year tribulation, I was thinking you could die during that time, but people would wish to die and couldn't. Oh, I didn't. They do. There, there, there is scripture in, in that seven-year tribulation where so... Huh? Some will be martyred. Uh, some will be the, the plagues and the things that come from the Bible. Yes. 
suffer that, that punishment. Uh, let, me, let me see if I can find that one real quick. There is some... Uh, but they can take your own life. You want to have the chance. Yeah. Revelation, Revelation 16, 16 where Let's look at it real quick. We're just in a question answer section. This is during the, the first two. Oh, excuse me. No, that's during the sixth seal. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was great earthquake. The sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth, even as the tree cast her untimely figs when she was shaken of a mighty wind. And when the heaven departed as a scroll, when it is rolled by two and every mountain and island were moved out of their place. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne from the wrath of the Lamb. For great is the day of his wrath. Come, who shall be able to stand? The, those are it's talking about there, and I make sure I clarify this. They're going to study, but there, there's some there that they're not. It's not their time, and they're they're going to want it to be their time because everything is so horrible. But it's not their time. They have to suffer that wrath that, that is coming there. It's risen while they are. But yes, there there will be many, many. Right, what did we say last week? One or quarter, yeah, quarter third. I mean, most of the humanity is going to pass away during that time, like billions of people. But there will still be probably around a billion people left after afterwards. And they're, and they're going to hell, but so, they don't, they're not cast to the lake of fire until after the thousand years. There you go. Remember that little that little study we did about Hades uh, a few weeks ago with, when Jesus went down to, to Hades? Of holding place that was not Gehenna, the lake of fire. Gehenna is the lake of fire. That's where people are cast into after the great throne judgment. So when they die, they'll go to hell, which is that's that, and it's a place of torment. It's a, everything that we talked about is a place of of great suffering. But the lake of fire is cast into forever and ever and ever. And that happens after the great throne judgment. What we're talking about now. This, this great time of peace that we'll have in uh, this millennial reign of Christ. But it's going to be great peace. We're going to have work. There'll be labor. There'll be economy. There'll be things that we'll do there. Uh, l l listen, listen what else it says in verse 23. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble. For they, for they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer, and while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Listen to this. The wolf and the lion shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock, and the dust shall be... Huh? I'm sorry. Isaiah 65. Isaiah 65, 23, and 24, 25. It's 25. And the wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock. And the dust shall be like the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy all in all my holy mountain, saith the Lord. Now that's going to be something different to see right there, right? There's going to be a change in the animal kingdom. Just like there's a change in us, there's going to be a change in the animal kingdom. All those things that are wild and, and scary now, they're not going to be that way in the millennial reign. It says the wolf and the lamb will lie down together. If you go throw a lamb in a wolf pack, what's going to happen to that little you lamb? Will. They're going to tear him to pieces. But in that day, the wolf and the lamb will lie together. It says the lion will eat straw like the ox. Did y'all know this? This is, a, this is a fun fact. Before um, the flood and before all those, did you know 
All of them was vegetarian. Everything was vegetarian. Tigers didn't eat cows. What about that old T-Rex? Huh? What about that old T-Rex? <laughs> yeah, that old T-Rex. They, they were there, uh, but they were vegetarian, those things. The T-Rex was, they were, they were meat eaters, I guess. Uh, I had to get my, my chronological thing there, but, uh, but some of those, those they, they didn't eat. They were vegetarian, okay? They didn't, lions, tigers, and all that stuff didn't eat those things. And they weren't scared of men. That's one reason why we say, well, how in the world did Noah get all them animals to get in the ark? Did you know before the flood, they weren't scared of man? When God made all the animals, they said the animals would come to Adam, and Adam would name them, name every one of them. And they came to him, and he named them, and he walked them. And even up until the flood, they did not have the fear of man in them. After the flood, because there was only two of each, right? When God let them off the ark, he said this. He told, uh, the, he told Noah, he said, Now the fear of all the beasts, the fear of man will be in every beast, every fish, every fowl of the air, so that you can't get close to them and you can't eat them because all that is opened up to you now. You can eat of any of them. But you're going to have to catch it. They're not going to walk up to you and you'll be able to take them. They ain't going to be like our chickens are now where they'll just come in and just take them. But he said there's going to be a fear put into them of man. And they'll be fearful of you. And that's why, that's why every time you see a wild animal, they flee from you. It's not because we're that scary looking. Because, listen, a bear, a lion, they will all stand their ground when they feel threatened. But even those types of animals, when they see a human, they run away. You know why? Because God has put the fear of man in them. Uh, now, when they feel threatened, they're going to fight back, and they're a whole lot more vicious and more powerful than we are. There's no reason for them to be scared of us other than the God has put that in there. But in the millennial reign of Christ, that will not take place. They will, the wolf and the lion will lay together. The, the, lion, or, excuse me, the wolf and the lamb will lay together. The lion shall eat straw like the bullock. Thank you. For behold, I create a new heaven and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered, nor come into mine. You got that title in your Bible? Yeah. You got a better Bible than I do. Mine don't have that, that title right there. Yeah. Uh, awesome. So that's what your subtitle says. It says, he speaks, he speaks about that. Yeah. Also, he talks about that. Listen, I'll, you go back and do this reading on your own, too, because we don't have time to cover every bit of but Isaiah chapter number 11. Isaiah chapter number 11. He talks about the same thing. Verse 6, the wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and the little child shall lead them. You know what's going to be amazing in the, in the millennial reign of Christ? You're going to see a little child walking down the road and he's going to have a tiger on, on the leash. <laughs> or a tiger by the tail. Ain't that what? Yeah. <laughs> what's, uh, what, what's that song that Buck Owens used to sing? I got, I got, a, tiger ta- I got a tiger by the tail. That's, that's actually going to be able to take place in the millennium. They, they, it, it says a, a child will even lead those, be able to lead those animals because they will be, uh, the curse will be lifted and there will be peace on the earth. The, uh, listen, the cow and the bear shall feed together. Their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. And the suckling child shall play on the hole of the asp. Anybody know what an asp is? Oh, yeah. Huh? Snake. Venomous right. snake. Venomous snake. Cobra. Asp is a snake. A young child. Do you know what used to scare me more than anything? In those old western movies, if somebody ever got in danger, they were all, it seems like those little kids that were playing, they was always slipped up on a snake somewhere. Man, that used to scare me. Like, I was like, oh man, they're going to get them snake beds, they're going to get them snakes, they're going to get them snakes. But in the millennium, they'll play with the snakes, and it ain't going to be snake handling, okay? But they'll be able to, to play, and, and the snake 
won't bite because the snake won't have any venom anymore because that curse will be gone. <coughs> Not only does it say that, but it says the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den. What is that? Vipers. I mean, that's a snake. I mean, he's going to be able to stick his hand in the snake hole because there will not be uh, any threat there. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. There's another place, let me give you this scripture too, that Isaiah talks about this new coming millennial. Isaiah chapter number 2. He talks about it in there. I'm not going to read a whole lot of that, uh, but he talks about it the same way. What he talks about there is the people going up and, and worshiping God in that holy where Jesus is at. Just let me read it to you real quick. I, I try not to bore you with scripture, but this is good to, to hear. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains, and they shall be exalted above the hills of the nation, and all nations shall flow unto it. I mean, all nations will go there and hear of Jesus and, and, and how Jesus teach them. And many people shall go and say, Come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. Uh, so it's going to say we're going to all go there. Let me say this. It's a time of peace because Satan has been banned. I'm trying to get somewhere tonight. We're not going to make it. We'll just go. But it's a time of peace. We'll get there next week. Come back. It's a time of peace because Satan has been bound up. He's been thrown in the bottomless pit. He does not tempt us. He does not come. So we'll all be able to live in, in the peace. Uh, there truly will be world peace at that time. There'll be no wars. There'll be no people fighting. You won't go outside on your backyard and hear a, a husband and a wife fighting and fussing. That won't happen there. There'll be no fighting. It's going to be peace on earth at that time. Um, also, it's going to be a time of joy. Uh, it's going to be a joyful time. Listen to what it says in Isaiah 51. Joy and gladness shall be found therein. Thanksgiving and the voice of melody. The redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion, and everlasting joy shall be upon their head. Sorrow and mourning shall flee away. So there'll be no sorrow, there'll be no joy. We know it talks about, he says, and God shall wipe every tear from their eye. That's in the new heaven and the new earth, the new millennium. But this millennial reign will be a time of pure joy. People will be happy uh, because of their. God's going to deliver them. He's going to deliver them from the sorrow and the fear and the bondage. There'll be no fears. He's going to remove the tears. So even like the people that survived the tribulation, like even seeing all the carnage that happens then, it's essentially like the same joy as those that go to heaven. Yeah, like absolutely. It's just, it's gone. Yeah, it's gone. They're, 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 the curse that is on their, lot, on their flesh is lifted at that time when they go. The world will make them Well, that, that, that's... Yeah, at the end. We're, we're going to... It just says for... It just says for a little season. He'll have time to go out and recruit him an army to fight. There's going to be a fight at the end of that. Listen, the whole, one of the whole purposes for the millennium, we'll get to this next week too, but one of the, huh? No, that's, Armageddon is at, at the end of the tribulation. That's not, it's, it's just another battle. Right, right, that's when that is. This, this is just going to be, it's not, it's actually not even going to be a, a big deal because the devil's going to get him up a new army and they're going to come and Jesus is going to say, you're gone. And that's it. I mean, it's not even really going to be a fight. But, one of the reasons for the millennium is there, there's several different reasons, but one of the reasons is to restore the promises unto Israel. Remember, God's chosen people. He's going to give them the land. 
He's going to give them all the promises that in this Bible have been promised. That's going to happen during this millennial reign. Another reason is for to give, I guess, a, come on, word, a reward to believers, for you, for us, that believe in Christ and walk with Christ during this life. It's going to be a reward for us. He's going to give you, do you know, we, we say, man, I wish the devil wasn't in this world. I wish he wouldn't stay on my back all the time. You know what he's going to do? He's going to give you that. It's going to be a reward for believers. But it's also going to prove a point that sin is not the devil's fault. Sin is our fault. Sin, man is sinful in his heart because we're going to live in a perfect environment without temptation, without uh, anything that will cause us to, to sin. But this is going to what happens. What does God give everybody in here? What does he give you? Free will. Free will. He gives you a choice to choose. That's one reason why the Satan has to be turned out at the end of a thousand years. All those that are, that are born during that time, all those that uh, are born during that time, they have to have a choice whether to choose Satan or to choose God. Listen, during that thousand years, righteousness is going to prevail, but it's going to be enforced. That means everybody's going to do it. You're going to go to church. You're going to go to Jerusalem. You're going to go do those things. And for most everybody there, they're going to want to do those things. But those kids that are born there, that's all they've ever known, to go and to do. You've got to go to church. And they're going to do it outwardly. You know, they're going to bow down. They're going to go. They're going to worship. But inside themselves, those natural born, not anybody, listen, don't get me wrong, nobody that has a new body will ever be in danger of this. We'll, we'll be there with bells on, glad to go. But those that are natural, that are born during that time, they're going to go, and it's going to be because we, they have to go. But deep down inside, they're going to say, they're just going to have a feeling, I, don't, I just had to do that. And then that, there'll be some that even they don't have their perfect body. They don't have their perfect body yet. They're natural. They still have a choice to make. Whether to choose God. And listen, on the outside they're going to choose him. So at the end of the thousand years when free will comes back up on the scene, people are in danger of choosing that, that sinful free will. There will be there will be quite a few actually. And by that time a thousand years, just think, those natural people that are a thousand years are going to be able to recreate for a thousand years. There's going to be a lot of people there. A lot of people. So it's just the natural people instead of continuing to have children. And right, like absolutely. I mean, it's just like the Israelites, you know, all the miracles that they saw performed, and they still have them. That, 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 absolutely. So it's the same. It's the same thing, but they're going to, and the devil's going to go out. And these people are even, they're going to even go move, like Jerusalem is going to be the center of the, of the world. That's going to be the capital of capital. Jerusalem, because why? It's where Christ is going to be, it's where he's going to reign, it's where he's going to rule from. And they're going to get as far away from that as they can. Listen, they're still going to be living in a perfect world, but they're going to get as far away from Jerusalem as they can because they're natural. They really don't. they got to go, but they really don't want to. And when the devil comes around, that's where he's going to be able to get him an army up to go. They're going, some will follow him. And it is to prove that sin originates in us, that even in a perfect condition, even without temptation, even without anything, man still will fall. Some men still will fall. Not everyone, but some. Some men still will fall. It's just to show that. Well, it's Satan here. He was in a perfect heaven. <laughs> That's exactly right. Remember, he just, he got to that point where he saw God, and he saw everything, and then he said, I want that. Instead of where I am. And he was at a very high spot. He was very powerful. But he said, I want his place. It originated in him. He was in a perfect place. Same way it's going to happen here uh, in this millennium. So there's going to be peace. There's going to be joy. Uh, there's not going to be any tears. Jesus will be preaching and personally teaching us. it will be holiness with all mankind. Listen to this. All right, I want, I want to read this to you. All men will serve Christ outwardly in this kingdom, age of holiness, during which Christ will rule with a rod of iron. Psalm, uh, excuse me, Psalm chapter 2, 8, 9, Revelation 2. Uh, 
one of my studies. However, even in this perfect age, the sinfulness of man's heart will be manifest as some defy Christ and face death for sin, and the others only obey outwardly. Those who do not love Christ will migrate to the ends of the earth to be as far away from Christ's presence at Jerusalem as they poss at possible. These will be the wicked men who join Satan in his final rebellion during this short season after the millennium. So you see that there will be those that would do that. Uh, they will be, they'll be obey outwardly, but inwardly they will not want to do that. Uh, there will also be universal justice there. Uh, there will be no injustices. There will be no oppression. There will be no... Uh, I, I, I'm a history buff, and I've been listening a lot to documentaries about World War II and things of those natures and the, the oppression that went on at the time. And I was actually listening talking about the, the Holocaust that happened, all those Jews that were killed during that time, and the oppression that they put on that people. And man will rise up and oppress men. They'll get on top and they'll be oppressed. In that time, they'll be like that because everyone will be seen as equal in that time. One more and I'll, I'll be done. We'll pick up here next week. Unprecedented universal outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon all mankind. Listen to this, Mary. This outpouring will take place at the beginning of the millennium at a unique time in history when all adults on earth are saved. Everybody entering in that time will be saved. And he's going to pour out the Holy Spirit on everybody. It's going to be wonderful, wonderful time. Where it's, I mean, we're going to have that. We'll be able to handle, you know, we can only handle little spurts of the Full fullness of the Holy Spirit. That's why when you see somebody in a church service and get happy and shout and holler, it's just because they got the Holy Spirit all over them sometimes. That's what it makes some people do. You may also see some people sitting on there just crying, weeping, seeing tears. That's what the Holy Spirit makes some people do. But we can only handle that for just a little bit of time. We can't handle him, that fullness and that, that full anointing all the time because these bodies can't. But when we get there, our bodies will be able to handle it because they'll be perfect. He's going to pour it out on us and we'll just be able to live like that. What a glorious time. We've got a lot of other stuff to talk about next week about, about it. I know it's a confusing topic sometimes because we have a little, no knowledge of it. But read those scriptures I give you. If you'll read in Isaiah 65, if you'll read in Isaiah chapter number 2, Psalms chapter number 2 is, is another one. Ze uh, Zephaniah chapter number 3 talks about different ones in, in Zephaniah chapter number 3 verse number 9 it actually talks about there will be a uniform language you remember at the time and I'm done with this you remember what happened at the tower God said what did he tell everybody brother Tony he said spread out go different parts of the world I want you to go here and they decided to do this we like it. That's the all kind of create right here. We're going to build this big old tower, reach all the way to heaven. And God said, because they disobeyed, God said, I will confuse their language. And he sat down and they, they sent them all different languages. So they had to group up with the people that spoke the same as them, and that's how different languages came about. But in this time of this millennial, it'll go back to a one, one universe language. It'll, everybody will speak the, the same language at that time. All right. I hope that was interesting. Read those scriptures and so you'll be read up next week. We'll get back on some more of this next week. We'll try to wrap it up next week.